All right, so thanks for the introduction. Uh, I will be talking about linear distinguishers in the keyless setting and uh, give an application to the um, standardized blocks I have a present. And this is joint work with uh, Christian Rechberger. So the outline of my talk is the following. I start by um, giving some intuition to the motivation behind this work that we did. Then I will uh, give a, um, uh, I will present this model that we uh, introduced now for uh, linear distinguishers in the keyless setting, and then I will apply it to the blocks I have present and conclude my talk in the end. So first of all, if we should uh, try to think about motivating the known key setting. Um, then you might think about having an application for a block cipher and you have the choice between two block ciphers A and B and maybe these two ciphers in the secret key settings um, are both secure so really you don't know what to choose but then it might be interesting to look at uh, stronger adversarial assumptions uh, for example the known key setting and here it might happen that there is some cryptanalysis on cipher B so of, of course uh, cipher A is the more um, preferable choice. Now, um, so this motivation for the known key setting probably sounds a little bit academic, um, but we don't think it is actually. Because if you think about um, constructing uh, compression functions or hash functions from uh, block ciphers, then it is exactly um, cryptanalysis in this, for example, the known key setting that uh, you can use to do collision or pre-image attacks. Um, so in the known key setting, what we basically can do is that the adversary is able to evaluate all parts of the cipher, whereas in the secret key setting, you typically have access to some input uh, and output. Um, so in this stronger assumption, we can really go beyond what you can do in, in the secret key setting or even the related key setting. Now in this talk, whenever I say the word keyless, um, I will mean either the uh, known key setting or the chosen key setting. Um, some people also call this open key setting, so this is roughly the same. Um, so if we have a look at some earlier models that we have seen for um, distinguishing uh, primitives in either the known key or chosen key setting, of course we have the uh, pioneering work by uh, Knussen and Raymond from 2007 from AsiaCrypt, uh, where they do known key distinguishers uh, on AES and some other primitives. Then we have uh, multi-collision distinguishers in the chosen key setting. We've seen subspace distinguishers. We've seen uh, chosen key rotational distinguishers, uh, limited birthdays distinguishers, and zero-sum distinguishers, you name it. Um, another work that I want to highlight here is uh, known key distinguishers by Gilbert from Asia Crypt last year. Um, I want to highlight this because in some uh, sense, the work that we do in, in, on the model that we present is, is, uh, is, is based on his work. So if we have a look at some of the applications to primitives that we have seen using these models that I just mentioned, uh, I list a few of them here. So we have seen some near collisions on, uh, on Whirlpool. We've seen uh, collision attacks on the Goistel hash function. We have in, uh, also seen related key, key recovery attacks on the full AS192 and 256. And also we have seen uh, cube attacks on reduced brand cat check. That will, uh, this is a work actually that will appear at uh, Eurocrypt this year. Now, what is common for all of these applications is that they are um, differential in nature. So the way they define a distinguishing property uses differential cryptanalysis in some sense. Um, so we do know of one exception to this, which is a linear distinguisher on reduced round uh, cube hash uh, by Ashur and Dunkelmann from 2011. But in this work, they do not give any model for the distinguisher. So they, they give some, um, uh, some uh, linear cryptanalysis and, and define a distinguisher based on this. Um, so this leads me to the contributions of our paper. So this fact that we didn't really uh, previously have any uh, characterization of what a meaningful statement is when we think about linear cryptanalysis in the keyless setting, then we we take this step now and we formalize this model for, uh, for these sorts of disting distinguishers. And what you need in our model is, uh, is actually very uh, simple. You can apply any previous uh, linear cryptanalysis that you might have done on your favorite block cipher. All you need is a uh, linear hull and you need a probability distribution on the absolute correlation for this linear hull. 
And the second contribution is, that, of course, mentioned a couple of times already, that we apply this to, uh, to present. And what we are able to give is um, known key distinguishers on up to 27 rounds, whereas uh, previously um, in the keyless setting, the best known result was an 18 round uh, chosen key distinguisher. Okay, so I will uh, move on to describe this model that we introduced in the paper. So, but I want to give a disclaimer because I will be pretty formal in my description of this model. But of course, we have some rigorous definitions in the paper. You can go and, and have a look. But hopefully, um, I, I will be able to describe um, at least the ideas behind. So um, to start out, we usually have an adversary. Um, and up here in this orange box in the right corner, I will be, uh, as, as I proceed with the describing this model, I will be putting some parameters up there. And these are the parameters for, uh, for the distinguisher that are chosen by uh, the adversary. So first of all, we have this adversary A, and she needs to uh, commit before anything else to uh, a particular linear hull for the block cipher. And this linear hull comes in the form of an input mask and an output mask, uh, here denoted by delta and gamma. So as I already uh, put in the box up there, this is something that the adversary chooses herself. Then the next thing that happens is that this adversary is allowed uh, to interact now with a specific instantiation of a block cipher. So in the uh, known key setting, this would be an instantiation uh, in the form of a particular choice of the key that the adversary chooses herself. Whereas in the, uh, in the uh, sorry, that was the known key setting. Uh, and uh, in the chosen key setting, she of course chooses the key herself. And then uh, she's allowed to interact with this uh, block cipher for a particular uh, period of time t. And this T, again, is also um, a parameter that is chosen by the adversary. Then, after this time T has passed, the adversary should produce um, an algorithm describing how to construct a set of inputs. So this set of inputs has a particular size, M. And again, this is also a parameter of the distinguisher that is chosen by the adversary. Now, to be able to distinguish this block cipher from um, an ideal permutation, uh, the property that we're interested in looking at is the subset of um, the inputs, M, that um, give an output C over the block cipher that uh, adhere to this uh, linear hull. So by this, I mean that the uh, inner product here to, uh, with the input mask and the plain text should be equal to the uh, inner product of the uh, output mask together with the cipher text. And now, if we denote the size of this set, uh, this green set up here, uh, by x, so this means we basically have x inputs that um, conform to this linear hall. And to be able to distinguish now this uh, block cipher, we're interested in, uh, in satisfying two requirements in our model. So the first requirement says uh, something about when we can consider this block cipher as being uh, non-ideal non in some sense. So what we are looking at is um, we're looking at the expected number of inputs from this set um, conforming to this linear hull. And what we uh, are considering is this event that the number of, um, of inputs expected to, to follow this hull should deviate from half the size of the input set uh, by at least square root of the uh, size of the input set. And now this, this uh, event should hold with probability at least uh, alpha. And this alpha, again, as you noticed up in the corner, is, is a parameter of the uh, distinguisher. And then with this requirement, of course, it's not enough. We should also uh, consider what happens in the, in the ideal case. So this brings out the second requirement, that if you take this uh, specific instantiation of the block cipher and replace it with the uh, randomly chosen n-bit permutation, then solving or s satisfying this first requirement uh, for any adversary A uh, using the same parameters should have probability uh, of less than alpha. So in the paper we have two results that I want to highlight that sort of go uh, hand in hand with this model. So the first one relates to the first requirement and basically says that if you have a particular choice of this uh, size m, so the number of inputs, then um, to be able to satisfy the first requirement we have to have uh, the property that the absolute correlation is at least two over the square root of the size of the inputs. And now uh, the alpha value from the requirement one 
can then be upper bounded by the probability of this event happening. The second result that we have um, relates to the second requirement, and this has to do with the, uh, with the uh, time t in which the adversary interacts with the uh, block cipher. Now, if this uh, time t is less than two times the square root of m, then we have the result that um, this second requirement is always satisfied. And this follows from um, the analysis under a uh, random permutation that um, solving the first requirement for the, uh, the random permutation is, has probability zero when this t is, uh, is lower than this value. Now, on the other hand, if t is at least four times the square root of n, we are in the other extremal case where satisfying the second requ requirement is not possible at all. Um, so with the model sort of introduced, I want to describe how we can apply this to the block cipher present. So first of all, we need one assumption, um, and this is the following, that if we consider a fixed key k, and we consider a fixed linear hull for present, then um, the uh, signs and the correlations for two uh, independent trails inside this linear hull will have uh, either positive or negative sign, uh, and in particular, the probability um, is a, uh, is a Bernoulli random variable with probability one half of being either positive or negative. And uh, for present, this has been uh, experimentally verified. Uh, a second paper that we, or a result that we rely very heavily on in, in our work is the work of Okuma from 2009. So what he did was basically he uh, classifies R-round linear hulls for present. And in particular, he shows uh, optimal hulls for present and he gives probabilities on the trails and how many trails are inside each hull. So basically from his, his work, we can, we can take something uh, out which is useful for in our case. And namely, this is that the absolute correlation is lower bounded by uh, here uh, big N times one quarter lifted to the number of rounds. And this big N here is um, the absolute deviation on the uh, number of trails with positive sign and the number of trails with a negative sign inside the linear hull. But this n is, of course, a key-dependent random vari variable uh, exactly under the assumption above uh, that sort of measures the imbalance on, on, the, on the signs. And this, uh, this big n is, uh, is binomial distributed, um, but uh, because of the sample size, we can get a very good approximation using the linear, uh, sorry, the normal uh, distribution with a mean of zero and a variance equal to the number of trails inside the hull. And this is, uh, again, as I mentioned, one of the, uh, the things already mentioned in the uh, work by Okuma. Now, as a sort of warm-up example here, I show how we can apply our model to distinguish 15 rounds of present. Uh, so the first thing we do is we choose the linear hull, and in particular here, we have an input mask and output mask uh, of the same value with a one on position 21 and zeros elsewhere. And again, this is one of the linear hulls from uh, Okuma's paper. And then for the model, we use um, an input set of size 2 to the 46. And we know now that uh, we have roughly 166,000 uh, trails inside this 15-round uh, linear hull. And um, using the analysis from, from before, we find that the probability of having an absolute correlation, at least 2 over the square root of m, is at least uh, 0.53. And this uh, now gives an upper bound on the alpha that we have in the model. Um, so already with this, we satisfy the first requirement. Now we just have to show also that the second requirement is satisfied, of course. But um, if we think about it, any set of uh, size m will actually work for this distinguisher. So in fact, the, uh, the time that the adversary needs to interact with the block cipher is zero. And then by the previous result, we already have satisfied the second requirement. So this gives, uh, in our model, a, a linear distinguisher in the keyless setting on 15 rounds of present. And this is applicable to at least 53% uh, of the key space. But we haven't actually used the keyless assumption for this so far. Um, in the sense that I already said, the adversary doesn't interact with the block cipher. Um, so let's try to look at how we can uh, extend this distinguisher for more rounds using this uh, assumption. So this is what I will do now. Um, so this requires now that we know the key. And the technique I will use has uh, some very similar ideas from, uh, from message modification. So 
This is what uh, three rounds of present looks like in case some of you don't know it. So it's a 64-bit block cipher. It consists of a, it's an SPN. So what we do is we start out by adding a 64-bit round key. And then we have 16 parallel applications of 4-bit S-boxes followed by a bit permutation. And this is what I have uh, iterated three times here. So this shows uh, the three first rounds of, of the distinguisher. And now what we want to do is we want to spend some time as an adversary uh, constructing some inputs uh, or con giving an algorithm on how to construct these inputs um, such that uh, this linear trail that we're interested in is satisfied with probability one. Uh, so the linear trail that uh, I'm looking at here is this uh, indicated with a dashed line here. So this is on, on position 21 all the way through all three rounds. So what we do now is we consider the, the S-box in the bottom here, so the S-box in the third round. And now we can really inspect the present S-box and we can, we can look at which inputs satisfy this linear trail over just this one round, this last round. And it turns out we have an, a handful of inputs that has this property. And now since by assumption we know the key already, we can take those four highlighted bits in the third round, we can add them to those inputs and trace them back through the permutation of the second round. Now what we see is that each of these four bits go to, again, to four different S-boxes. And just using the same technique again, we can, uh, we can construct a direct product of 16-bit uh, of, uh, inputs to the second round that has the property that they give us the, the, um, the values on those four bits that we require them to have on after the S-boxes, plus also the, uh, the extra requirement that this uh, linear trail should be satisfied over the over position 21. So now we have a, now a bigger set of inputs for the second round, and we can again add this uh, 16 key bits and go back uh, exactly the same way through the first round. And what we uh, are able to obtain from this is that we have some uh, very efficient algorithm to construct up, up to uh, roughly 2 to the 62 uh, inputs for present. And these inputs all have the property that they follow this uh, linear trail uh, with probability one over the first three rounds. And the time uh, required to do this um, corresponds approximately to uh, the number of rounds times two to the 15 evaluations of uh, our round present. And it should be noted here that uh, we're actually able to do this using only a little more than two degrees of freedom. So um, towards the end here, I want to give uh, this table which shows um, different distinguishers for present uh, 128 uh, in the keyless setting using our model. So each entry in the table is a pair. Um, so the first value in this pair is the log of the time parameter. And the second uh, value in the pair is the log of the size of the key space supporting this distinguisher. So for example, we can consider here a 22 round distinguisher on present using an input set of size 2 to the 55. Um, oh, OK. Yes, 2 to the 55. I don't look at the values in the bottom. They're not really matching. Um, so the time, maybe I can use this. Ah, yeah. So the time is 2 to the 3, roughly. And uh, the distinguisher is supported by um, 2 to the 126 uh, keys. And if we look in, oops, in another case, we can see for 27 rounds of present that using the exact method that I described uh, on the slide before, in time roughly 2 to the 10, we can uh, give a 27 round uh, known key distinguisher for about 2 to the 72 keys. So this brings me to the, country, uh, to the end here. Um, so what we did was basically uh, we give for the first time a um, distinguishing model uh, in the keyless setting using linear cryptanalysis, whereas previous models have been using um, mainly differential cryptanalysis. And we are able to use this model to distinguish up to 27 rounds of the uh, standardized block cipher present. And um, one can immediately use this uh, analysis um, in uh, compression function uh, constructions from block ciphers. Some open problems that are worth mentioning would be to uh, be able to extend this three-round approach uh, for, more than, for more rounds uh, without losing any of the probability, and also to, um, to try to apply this model to other primitives and especially compare against uh, existing models for those primitives. 
And then finally, I want to mention in the end that uh, we have some, uh, ex uh, some code for experimental verification of our model, and you can go to uh, GitHub and download this and uh, try it out for yourself. So thank you. Thank you.